Stop crafting legendary equipment. As of right now, you need to pump the brakes on any legendary you had planned to craft because big changes are coming to the equipment system. In fact, changes that were so big, people reacted so strongly that within 24 hours, the developers released this notice saying, hold up, we're going to reevaluate our approach to this and we'll get back to you. So stick around in this video for my thoughts on what exactly just happened? Why it is that you should not craft any legendary equipment right now? You should not put any iconic crystals on the legendary equipment. And y'all just need to chill for a minute while we figure this out. Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and if you haven't been to my channel before, I've made over 2,000 videos about Rise of Kingdoms, including guides that have been viewed many, many, many thousands of times about equipment. In fact, I probably have over a million views on equipment-related videos alone. So equipment really matters a lot to me, is what I'm trying to say. And the equipment system, at least Generally speaking, equipment systems are fun collection aspects to any style of game like this that is a war game. But the most recent update was going to include a bunch of new power creep to legendary equipment. As it says up at the top, new equipment is all legendary quality and it includes higher level helmets and higher level uh, chests, gloves, legs, and boots, as well as weapons. Okay. Now, this, at first blush, is an exciting thing. Players want to make equipment. And players are really hyped to get new equipment. Make no mistake about it. The core idea of giving us more stuff to make is actually really cool. But there's a couple flaws, and I want to talk about that before I get any further in the video, because the most important takeaway from this video is to stop crafting anything at all that is legendary. Do not put any iconic crystals, because if the developers do decide to go through with this particular update, some of those investments that you'll be making will be made either irrelevant or less relevant entirely. And let me explain that. The thing that has always been a conundrum for me with the equipment system at the highest end of things is the way that legendary equipment works. If you go to dismantle legendary equipment, and I get new players are like, bro, this is so far away from me. Who cares? But if you go in the end game to dismantle legendary equipment, you lose half your materials. This has always been a confusing design choice to me. And the reason is that players hate losing stuff. Losing half your le legendary materials is an astronomic cost. At the very cheapest, if I dismantle legendary boots, I lose 20 legendary materials. Not to mention all of the... Other times I've spent materials trying to refine it for a special talent. Let's just set that aside for a minute because we'll cover that later. So if I just have an untalented legendary and I'm like, oops, I made the wrong thing, that is going to cost me almost $200 worth of materials or you can get that stuff free to play. But how do I arrive at $200? Well, you take the 20 legendary materials, you multiply by 2,400 um, which is the VIP shop price, okay? I can go into the VIP shop, scroll on down, boom. If you even have the VIP to go buy this stuff, right? So 2,400 gems per, right? You got 20 of them. Um, that's 48,000 gems. That's almost $200 worth of raw gems for an oopsie daisies. Whoops, I made the wrong thing. So the reason that that has always been a confusing design choice to me is that it is so punishing that you're basically telling players never experiment with equipment ever. In your perfect world, you have so many needs for materials across so many things. If you ever need to dismantle, you've actually made a mistake with your equipment, which is why I make so many guides about legendary equipment in Rise of Kingdoms. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing for Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value, smash your enemies, and not make these kinds of mistakes. So why am I telling you all this? Well, this design of the way that legendary equipment works, I thought 
since the very beginning was an extremely limiting choice. It makes it so that you can't ever release new equipment without extremely punishing players to the point that players actually might lose faith in the system as a whole and lose trust that like my investments are worth doing because they won't just be overwritten the next day, right? And, and I think that is where players started to really get, I think, vocal about their feedback about this system and cause the developers to say, hold up, okay, we want to release new equipment, and your opinions matter to us, but we're going to rethink this a little bit. Because let me take the upcoming changes that were on their way, like if player feedback didn't happen, these would have come through, and bring it to an extreme. Because for an end game player, remember, these are the best customers of the game. The players who spend the most money. They are sitting on seven legendary sets of equipment, and they were going to have to reforge helmets, Weapons, chests, gloves, legs, and boots. Now, there's special consideration that's going to go into the KVK-related items, and we'll talk about that in a bit, okay? However, um, the thing is that if I were to dismantle an entire legendary set like the one you see here without even getting into all of the materials I spent refining, which was extremely expensive, okay? Every time you refine, it costs 50% of the materials and a pattern. It ain't cheap to have refined. It was very expensive to get your collection to the point, especially that I'm at, right? Which, hey, look, I get most people aren't here. The point is that there are a, a lot of customers that play this game, that spend a lot of money, and how much legendary materials, how many legendary materials do you lose if you followed what the game was encouraging spenders to do, which was make seven, uh, seven legendary sets of equipment without even factoring in all of the special talents, okay? I did this math a while ago. It's like, 30 pieces over here, 30 pieces over here, 30 pieces over here that you're losing. So that's, what is it, 90 legendary materials over there, right? Plus you lose 20 here and 20 here. So that's another 40. So we're up to 130. And then this cost you 45. So that's 175 legendary materials per um, set that you're deconstructing, that you're losing, times seven, okay? So that is a grand total of 1,225 legendary materials just destroyed because the meta is new and I need to go make the new things. So this is telling the best customers of the game that they're losing 1,225 legendary materials. If I just do some math on that really quickly, okay, um, those are 2,400 gems a pop. So we're talking about almost 3 million gems worth of lost materials. Divide by 25,000 gems per $100 times 100, and you're looking at $11,760 worth of materials without even getting into the special talent math, which is also different based on the update, but still, like, that's a lot of dollars worth of investment that's like, I have to delete, now, I'm, I'm intentionally using this word, I have to delete. No one has to do anything. But the intention of a game and the thing you want your players to do is to take your game seriously. And to take the game seriously, you want to push into the direction of whatever is the meta. At least that's the way I play games, right? I, I try to find the most effective tactic I possibly can and move all in on that, right? So not only do you lose all the materials, of course you lose all the patterns, but you also lose all the iconic crystals. Remember, when you dismantle, you, you lose the iconic on here. So this punishes players for having deployed their iconic crystals. And some of those iconic crystals you get on a recurring basis. But some of those iconic crystals you got from achievements that you can never get again. So th this, by the way, is compounded even further, by the way. Right here are some of the iconic crystals you get from achievements. These take a lot of energy and effort to get, right? And it's like, if if I have to dismantle all this stuff, you're kind of like undoing all of this, this um, great commitment I've made to the game, right? And I think this is why players were like, 
hold on, wait a minute, but I'll add more, okay? Which is that if you add new legendary equipment to the game, which I think is awesome, I, I want there to be new legendary equipment, okay? The way that this is designed currently, you have to understand, is that a player who's already made the seven sets that they need is now in a position where their old gear is actually worthless. It is useless. It is literally worthless, quite literally, because a new player to the game can sort of roll forward with these changes, right? A new player can say, all right, well, I only had one legendary set and I needed to make a second one for cavalry anyways. So like, hey, cool. I'll have one set of the old stuff and one set of the new stuff and I'll go from there, right? But an old player, it's all waste. You just, you're deleting the old stuff to get the new stuff to replace. And um, that doesn't feel great. And, and I'm trying to be like super constructive. The, the core idea behind what I'm sharing here um, is something in psychology called loss aversion. And let me explain this concept. It's very easy to understand, okay? The idea behind loss aversion is very simple. People are very um, averse. They're, they do not like losing stuff. So even if the end outcome is the same, the idea that you had to lose something to get there is very bad. Let me explain. If I said to you, hey, which would you prefer? Would you prefer to find $200 but lose $100 of it? Somebody steals it from you. Or would you prefer that you just find $100? Well, the outcome here is the same. In both cases, you have $100 at the end. But people will almost universally say, I'd rather just have the $100 than have found $200 and have had 100 stolen from me. It feels better to have just found $100 than to have found 200 and then to have lost 100 of it. Now, this concept goes even further, which is that, like, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, but like loss aversion. People are afraid of locking in losses, which is why they hold on to stocks too long and make really bad financial decisions. Um, there's a whole idea of like a sunk cost fallacy, which is like, yeah, you've already invested and then there's new stuff. I don't want to get into like the whole complex web of this, but what I'm trying to say is between the two pathways to get to the same end point, one approach feels bad and one approach feels good. So if you want to release new equipment into the game, my strong recommendation is to simply make upgrades to the existing equipment. What feels good? Getting an upgrade, baby. Who doesn't want to get an upgrade? Imagine you show up to a flight, okay? You're going on a long trip on an airplane and they upgrade you to first class. Hell yeah, that feels good. Imagine, imagine that um, you go to a hotel and they upgrade you to a nicer room. Yo, let's freaking go, okay? So in my opinion, if you want to release new equipment into the game, I am 100% behind that. And I would do two things to really make that feel so fun for players, okay? The two things I would do are as follows. First of all, I would make it so that there is a great upgrade path, okay? Make it so that I can go from what I have to what is new. And I get that this is a little bit weird, but do that in a way that there is a zero loss scenario. I should lose nothing, literally nothing, to upgrade to the new hotness. Literally nothing. Make it all fun and good upside. Because, you know, People want to pay money for things that feel fun, good, upside. They're into that. We're, we're like all about it, right? The second thing I think that should be reworked into the equipment system, and this can be a part of the upgrade process or maybe instead of an upgrade process, is to remove the inability to experiment between different pieces of equipment without getting heavily, heavily punished. Make it so that you don't lose half the materials when you dismantle. And even if you have to go back in time and say, okay, we keep track of like everyone who had to dismantle stuff and we are going to give you back the materials you lost from having done that, I think it's worth doing. 
And I think it's worth rethinking this system so that it can scale infinitely into the future in a way that people are happy about, that doesn't trigger our extreme aversion to loss because people would rather hold on to the wrong equipment than dismantle the equipment they have. I want to try to explain that again. The aversion to loss is so bad, people want to hold on to the equipment they have rather than switch to other things. And what I think an equipment system ought to do is enable people to try different stuff, right? Like, hey, look, if I want to have three cavalry sets, okay, and I want to get rid of an infantry set, yo, let me do it. Let me do it at, at no cost to materials. And if it costs me patterns, because I'm a dumb dumb and I made the wrong thing, I mean, or if like, I'm a dumb dumb is maybe really not a good explanation. If if it costs me patterns, like that I feel like players can start to understand, although that costs money too, and that's like a separate thing. But I think players can wrap their head around, okay, like I need new patterns. I get it. And I, I think that could be okay. Um, but losing all the materials is such a strong punish. Um, and I think that's why the developers ultimately had to release a statement that was like, okay, we're not going to do these changes. This is why at the start of the video, I said you should literally craft nothing. Because if the developers continue forward with these changes, um, there's several things that are really important. So let me walk through this really quickly, okay? The new equipment is all legendary. It includes level 50 helmet, chest, gloves, legs, and boots. That's five pieces of equipment as well as level 55 weapons for cavalry, infantry, and archers. All of this is five levels higher than the best we have today, with the exception of the helmets, interestingly enough. Um, new helmets, chests, gloves, legs, and boots will have set effects. Equip two or four for the added bonuses. So we're getting sets that you're going to want to move in on. I mean, it's just going to be better than anything else we can do. The new weapons will not have set effects. The materials required to forge the new equipment will be the same as the materials required to forge level 45 equipment of the same unit type and equipment slot. Well, wait, hold on a minute. This is a part of the weirdness here is that yesterday, if I made something, is this telling me it's the same type of materials required to forge the new equipment or the same amount of materials? Because if 60 materials yesterday got me... 12% of stats, and tomorrow it gets me 16% of stats if I had the new pattern, and I have to lose half the legendary materials to do the upgrade. Do you see the problem here? Like, you can't craft right now until we see what they're going to do with this system. Um, the new level 50 equipment can be used in all seasons. The new level 55 equipment, however, can only be used in the season of conquest. So level 50 equipment, all seasons. Level 55, season of conquest only. Forging and refining the new equipment will work the same as other equipment. So they're literally just swapping in new equipment. It's just better. Like, this is the weirdest form of power creep. We're giving you better stuff. We're giving it to you at the cost of the old stuff. We're not even going to discount the old stuff or give you a refund on it for the amount of materials you spend. I mean, as you walk through this, it becomes like really immediately apparent if you spend in this game. As to why it's like, hold on, what have I been spending on? Um, the new equipment will be added to the game gradually, and relevant events will be adjusted as the new equipment is added. The specific plan is as follows. The rules for dismantling legendary equipment will be optimized. When dismantling a piece of legendary equipment, the higher its refinement level, the more materials will be refunded. Still 50% at refinement level zero. See that? That to me is a fat L. Um, and, and look, like, redesign the system so that you can release new equipment for many years to come. And that there's no punish to players for investing in equipment. And it's just all upside, it's all fun. Just get get rid of the get rid of the legendary material loss. I think that is hindering the ability to make it feel good to get new stuff, okay? You'll be able to view specific rules via the blacksmith page after this version goes live. If you dismantle a piece of legendary equipment that has special talent, or is above refinement level zero before the new rules take effect, you will be compensated for the difference later. So they are keeping track of this, which is good. Um, the equipment preview feature will be added to the blacksmith. Okay. New level 50 equipment um, 
content in this version. A new type of chest will be added to the rewards for Soroli, Ian's Ballads, and Golden Kingdom. When opening these chests, you'll have a chance to find Blueprint Fragment Choice Chests for the new equipment. Blueprint Fragments for the gloves and chests can be earned by taking part in the Holy Knight's Treasure and the Hunt for History, um, or by opening Blueprint Fragment Choice Chests. Um, the new level 55 equipment content in this version, once uh, 1.0.75 goes live, you'll be able to preview blueprints for new weapons in the combat shop of the ongoing season of Conquest. You will be able to purchase these blueprints with Conquest coins. So <clears throat> your KVK weapons are also getting swapped out. The schedule for the Holy Knight's Treasure and uh, Hunt for History events will be unified across all kingdoms that have these events, which I think is good. The Arms and Armor event will begin the day after this update goes live. By taking part in this event, you'll have a chance to earn iconic crystals and other valuable rewards. So like now that we have to delete all of our iconic equipment in order to have the materials for the new stuff, um, they're going to give us a way to get iconic crystals. I think it's great to give us a way to get iconic crystals. It it just the feel bad. This is all about loss aversion. The feel bad of getting rid of our already made iconic hard earned equipment. It, it, I'm so attached to my collection. You know, I'm attached. I'm attached because actually I lose a lot of value if I have to get rid of it. Right now, as of November 1st in 2023, this is a long ways away. Starting from this update, two new Crusader achievements will be added to the Season of Conquest in the Lost Kingdoms. By completing these Crusader achievements, you'll earn Conquest coins and other valuable rewards. And then in December 4th, so this is like way in the future, in the VIP shop, the Cavalry, Infantry, and Archer random blueprint fragment chests will be replaced with new ones. When opening these chests, you'll have a chance to receive the level 50 blueprints, new level 50 equipment uh, content in this version. After this update, the following equipment blueprints will be removed from Season of Conquest Shop. Sacred Dominion, Hammer of Sun and Moon, Hydra's Blast, Pride of the Khan, all the KVK stuff is removed, and they will be added to Holy Knight's Treasure and Hunt for History, or by opening the blueprint chests. Okay? And this equipment can be used in any season. The new level 55 equipment... Um, in this version, in this version, you'll be able to purchase new blueprints for the weapons in the Season of Conquest shop. You can buy up to three copies per season. Wow. In addition, blueprint fragments for the new level 50 legs and boots will be added in a future update to Holy Knight's Treasure, Hunt for History, and new blueprint fragment choice chests. Stay tuned. So this is going to get rolled out over a long period of time, except the developers were like, hold up, we got to rethink this um, because you know, players were upset. Now, there was more to this, which is that, and I think this is good, if they did this for every piece of equipment, maybe we'd be having a slightly different conversation, but they're basically saying, okay, um, the Hammer of Sun and Moon, the Sacred Dominion, the Hydra's Blast, and also the helmets, okay, the KVK helmets, they cost a higher amount, we're gonna cost, uh, cut that cost in half, which is really wild, and they're going to give you back any materials you spent that's the difference of these. I think this would be another option for the developers to pursue is to say, okay, for all of the equipment, we're going to reduce the legendary material cost and give you back the difference. Right? Like, that could be interesting. That could be more interesting. That still doesn't address the question of all the iconic crystals we've committed. But my overall feedback here on this system. And the reason, look, the reason the, the developers received a lot of feedback is simply because of loss aversion. You can take us to the same end state, but taking us there in a way that incurs a feeling of loss is going to always get negative feedback. Like, you can just count on that. You can bank on players being upset about feeling like they're losing stuff, right? But, like, I actually think small tweaks to how this is done could be really, really fun. And like, do players really want new equipment? Absolutely. We all want new equipment. I, I, I think that's cool. Especially if the new equipment gives us options. Options are great, man. We're all for having options to do this or that, to, to customize the way that our stuff works. I think this is really cool. But to give an extreme example, okay, as to why people would be upset about this, imagine that you invested in the legendary leadership set. You literally just went in 
and you just have been within the last six months, right? You've been making the legendary leadership set, okay? And imagine that literally within six months of spending how many thousands of dollars, a better option is now here. Yikes, right? Like that's why players are feeling a lot of pain. And although they didn't mention a new leadership set, okay? What the leadership set will now be good for is pretty much only defending your city, I think, where you're guaranteed to have mixed troops for sure. I mean, they didn't mention a leadership set. Maybe there would be a, a new leadership set. But no matter how you slice it, if there is a new leadership set coming out, then investing in the old leadership set is an L. Because like you're going to lose half your legendary materials. You're going to lose your iconic crystals because you're not meta anymore. And why does being meta matter? Well, the best... The best customers of this game, the ones that spend the most, are trying to be rally leads and garrison captains. And they have to have the most stats, right? And those players are just, they just got to throw away how many legendary materials to go to the new stuff, right? Not to mention the patterns. I mean, the, this, the, 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 I haven't even really talked about, and we spent money for patterns too, right? So um, that's fine. Um, so the other thing I'll say is that before we had this leadership set, the meta was to go mono troop. So you'd use like a mixed garrison, but you'd probably go with infantry because certain infantry pieces have a lot of stats for other troop types like the Hope Cloak and the Eternal Knight, right? I think the power level of the new equipment probably when it's talented is giving you somewhere in the realm of like 5% more total stats per piece. So you might end up back in a world where like the new infantry set is the meta even for a mixed garrison and you tell people actually we can have mixed but focus all on infantry, right? So all that to say at this moment in time you should not craft any legendaries, you should not deploy any iconic crystals until we actually learn how the new system is going to work. And I want this new system to be awesome. I I am fully 100% 100% supportive of new equipment coming into the game and I hope this is viewed as like offering constructive thoughts on how that equipment system could work because I think it could be very fun and I just hope that uh, the developers will take a look at that feeling of loss aversion and address it and I think if that's addressed I don't think people will be upset but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments I recognize this is like a longer video I hope it didn't come across as like ranty I am really like genuinely trying to be constructive in saying like, we want new equipment, but please don't invalidate what I've done so far. <laughs> oh man. If you enjoyed the vid, do me a favor, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. If you're looking for what the best legendary equipment has been to make to date, I'll have cards in the end screen for the best free to play equipment and also the best legendary equipment. So if you're working your way up to legendaries and you're not there yet, I got a video for you. All of that guidance will still be relevant because you don't lose materials when you craft that stuff. And um, at the, you know, legendary tier, if you wanted to know what was the best, cards in the end screen.